All right, so here's a great shot, aerial shot, again with the uh, crowd uh, on the field. Um, and you can see all, we were talking about parking cars earlier, you can see the lot. Was that your family's lot? No, right there. On the back side. On the back side, right. right. Yeah, where Esco's office were. Right. You know, I could almost tell a story about that because that worn out space behind shortstop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 1950, Lewis and Clark played its home football games there. Oh, no kidding. They played about three, uh, they didn't play at all, but they played about, because they didn't yeah, have I remember football. that. And one, two of the games they played were in the mud. And I, I, I didn't know your dad then, but I wondered Holy what uh, You know what, what your you, dad can, you can make out the grid. Yeah. Uh, so they, the, they, the football field, the end zones were in the right field diagonal and the and left, left field, field diagonal. Correct. And second base was about the 50 yard line midfield. Yeah. So half the field was in the mud <laughs> and half was in the outfield, which turned to mud. And I've always, after I've got some actual pictures of the games played there, and I always wondered what Dickie thought about, or what uh, Rocky thought about. Uh, I don't remember him really uh, commenting on it. I mean, but it, it shows it there. It does. How I it see really it. up that field. Hey John, you were saying your family house was just beyond. Oh yeah, 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 yeah right, 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 in right in there. Right here, Dickie huh? is pointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But looking at that picture reminds me of another great story. Uh, Rupert Thompson was playing center field for the Portland Beavers, <laughs> and Raleigh Truitt was the announcer at Bond Street. And and I just hear it over and over in my head. Raleigh Truitt was announcing the game, and, and I'll set that up by saying, when the team was on the road, Rocky would flood the outfield with water to soften it up <laughs> so that when the ball team came back, the field was nice and soft. Well, this was the first game after spending, uh, putting the outfield under water for 10 days or so. This is the first game the Beavers had just come back home. And Raleigh Truitt's announcing, and he says, there goes a humpback liner out in the short center field. And Rupert Thompson's swooping in on it. He dives for it. He's got it. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the field was so wet, and there was a spot there where it was caved in, and Rupert Thompson slipped right onto the turf, and he disappeared. <laughs> Didn't he come up he's with the ball? Yeah, then when he dug out of the out of the mud, he came up with the ball in his hand. Probably another Herman Ridge. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, I have a question. Yep. Chapman yes. has a new soccer field, synthetic field. Oh, and Chapman, it's quite yeah. beautiful, but I love these stories of the mud and the other things, and it seems like a part of a way of life. That, so do you guys, what do you guys think about the new equipment, the new fields, and, and not dealing with the weather and the mud? <laughs> Are there good mud stories? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I don't know how I'd handle it. Would you want a new field and not have to deal with that scenario? I mean, would you well, I think each, say, each generation has its own traditions and culture and things happen. But in Northwest Portland, we used to have a football game on Thanksgiving Day <laughs> called the Govno Bowl. <laughs> and I'll explain what that means later. But anyway, it was a tradition in the neighborhood. And we would have no pads, no football equipment at all. It was just, you know, just ourselves. And it would inevitably be muddy and wet. And we would go out there for two or three hours and bang each other up. And we'd come home after, and we'd have a lot of fun. It was tradition. We'd come home and my parents would look at me, where my brother and I just full of mud and dirty and tired and think, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? How can that be fun? Is, well, it is fun. It's just a tradition that went on in the neighborhood for many years. Hey, Tommy? Well, govno, govno is a Croatian word for feces. <laughs> and that's why it got, feces. just got that name because of the mud. <laughs> well, the a field behind St. Patrick's Wall. No, it's a chap. It's At a Wallace Park. Yeah. Wallace Park. Yeah, Wallace Park. <laughs> I remember playing in, in that field behind uh, St. Pat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So no, this was a wall of park, a little bigger field. Yeah. Yeah. Which brings <laughs> another story. St. Pat's actually, if it hadn't been for the priest, I don't know, mentioned Father Mitchell. Father Mitchell after a while, but 
there was a Catholic priest that came out here from the old country, and his father's name was Nikolic. Well, at this time, we had probably 13 families that kept the church going. And I think probably one of the McMinnon brothers got together with one of the guys that eventually grew up in Slab Town. And these guys become lawyers. So the one guy, uh, the McMinnons who originally bought this place and a couple of others, got together with the other lawyer. And let's, let's see what we can do to help the uh, St. Pat survive. So here's what happened. We only had 13 families, and I'm sorry I can't think of the other lawyer's son. He said, well, let's get together, let's see what we can do. So we wound up having a big dinner out at the University of Portland. We made $1,000. That $1,000 helped keep the St. Pat's Church going because at that time there was another priest in another locale that says, well, let's sell it to Consolidated Freight. We can make some money and we'll build a church someplace else or they can come up to Cathedral. Father Nicholas says, no, this is a beautiful church. Let's see what we can do. Well, the bank was right there across the street. They wanted to buy the same property. And of course, the thousand dollars that we raised helped us invigorate the household. And before you know it, we started getting a donation here, a donation there. And we kept St. Pat's going. So the people who watch the rerun of this thing, I would advise you to come down to St. Patrick and see what a renovation has done. But let's go back, even before the good Father Nicolay. We have a gentleman here who knew Father Mitchell. Father Mitchell was one of these priests who knew how to duke it out with people. And he was good to his kids. He'd have smokers down at St. Patrick. Wanted you to learn how to how to protect yourself, you know, how to bob and weave and throw a punch. <laughs> well, they took the kids out to the racetrack where the dogs were running, and some guy ran into the kid, or the kid ran into him, and he gave him a sharp elbow, and you know, the priest, Father Mitchell, says, what'd you do that for? He's just a kid. He said, I oh, got in my way. What the hell are you going to do? Go, Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> and he dropped the guy so, right in his so track. just like him, too. <laughs> yeah. And Father says, Come on, get up. Is there something wrong? <laughs> he probably tripped. <laughs> but anyhow, God bless Father Mitchell. Amen for that. He was that kind of a guy, and it was Father Mitchell who really kept us going with all the kids that have graduated from here and once again through Benevento, Rocky Benevento. Uh, there's so many stories that have come up from Slab Town. I'm glad that you, Tim Hiltz, is putting this all on you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So this is a, a kind of a lost chapter. No, it's actually, does anyone know who that is? 1923, or 22, I think. Where's Shulman? Is that Schumer? No, that's it's the, Jim uh, Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe. Is Jim Thorpe. that right? Yeah, played, played for the Beavers, Beavers for. Uh, I did not know yeah. that. I did not know. Yeah, I didn't know that until I saw that picture. Then I started Holy doing some research mackerel. on it. I knew he was a good he, baseball. He player. didn't play a full yeah, year. It was no, like was uh, 13 yeah, weeks or something. But he was given a contract uh, for the amazing, remarkable sum of money of a thousand dollars a month. Wow, yeah. that was huge. A lot, no days. Holy mackerel. That was more than probably all the rest of the players together, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's Jim Thorpe, Jim, 1922. That's, got the greatest picture. And I think that the story was lost until that picture showed up in the Oregon Historical Society and somebody started saying, yeah. what was Jim yeah. Thorpe doing here? Yeah. Then they did research on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Gregory wrote a column on it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And for people who didn't know who Jim Thorpe was, he was an all-American, an Indian. And the background on him, how many Indians, you always thought of the tomahawk, you know, some guy's gonna scalp you whenever you come out west. I had a couple of cousins there from Chicago. We don't wanna come west. The Indians are liable to scalp us. <laughs> well, that was the saying in those days. People were afraid to come west. I would say right now with what's been happening in the Midwest and the hurricanes on the East Coast, 
get your bodies out here and live a good life in, in Oregon, Washington, Idaho. But Jim Thorpe was made famous with that photo right there, the big P for Portland. Boy, isn't that cool? The greatest nice athlete. Picture. He's actually one of the greatest athletes ever to compete yes, in the United exactly. States. Yeah. yeah. Played professional football. He won a gold medal in the Olympics. Did they take his medals away at took one time? His, took his Olympic medals yeah. away because he had played for a semi-pro like baseball. Semi-pro football. Yeah. Yeah. Semi-pro semi football. football. That was a shame. Yeah. During the movie, that was a hell of a movie. Did they after he died? Did they give him back? To yeah, him? I think I they think re so, yeah. reestablished. And gave him his daughter or something. Yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. I believe it was reestablished. Yeah, I think so. So I have to note, since I'm a huge Red Sox fan, coming from New England myself, growing up, always adoring Johnny Pesky, by the way. Uh, Jacob Ellsbury from uh, Oregon is now one of the Red Sox and baseball's big stars. Um, from Madras, Oregon, from Madras, eastern part yep. of the state. Yeah. Yeah. My brother had a hand in talking about remember Ellsbury. That. Okay. Maybe he's the owner's wife good, or something. You got a good swing, you're a left-hander. Don't try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. What's the guy's already got 20, 25 home runs? <laughs> and uh, you got a sweet swing. And bottom line, once again, when you get to the big leagues, you always have somebody that's been around, try to help you make the good good cuts of the ball. As a matter of fact, Dick Sinovic was a damn good hitter. If it hadn't been for the black guy by the name of Hank Aaron, we'd be looking at a, a fellow who'd be in the Hall of Fame right now. He had a good mind for baseball. I always told him you'd have been a great manager. Yeah, he says, I wish you'd been my publicity manager. <laughs> So here's a team from 1928 that has a number of players that these guys have been Last talking two about. Weeks of 48 and the opening two weeks. 28. Yeah. 49. Yeah. Thank and you, Brazil. Yeah, short time. He's the only guy, I uh, think, in the neighborhood that uh, Dick Sinovich over here, he played for the Portland Beavers for a short period of time, as he said, at the end of 48 and the beginning of 49 before he got traded. So uh, in this picture are the owner, Tom Turner, um, Roy Mack, Roy Mack yeah. and then uh, George, George, George Brannison. Yeah. He was the secretary. And his, was it his brother that had the, uh, the uh, club? The, uh, club by the Kingston? Yeah, the Kingston. Yeah. Fred. Fred, Fred. Brannison. Is that Fred. George's brother? Yeah. 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 And, and Fred had all that baseball oh, yeah. baseball memorabilia. He, if he could have kept that memorabilia, this place would be loaded yeah. right now. How many, how many people did they keep on the squads in the 20s? How big was their, ball, their players? Well, look at the how many, the how many players did they keep, the Beavers? See that? Oh, probably in those days, you probably had about center. 16 right, guys. Right, they they didn't have as many as they do now. 18, all right. <laughs> Today, I think you have a total of 21, and you always have some guy on the... 30-day uh, list of get DL, recuperated. Yeah. That's about the standard size. It's just yeah. the way they're so. Now, you were a clubhouse boy, too, I, right? I, Johnny was, okay, here's the way we, just like John Bessick said, you waited for some guy to either move, oh, yeah. maybe die. <laughs> <laughs> you inherited it. Two years. In, yeah, you inherited it. So, uh, Vince Sullivan was a bad boy, and he might be, well, I don't know. They got one of the Minnow brothers yeah, here. Yeah, Joe Minto. Okay. Minto lived right across the street and uh, eventually worked for Blitz Weinhart, Big Brewery, which is another good story that we can all relate to. But as a bad boy, you wanted to be doing something. And Rocky, if you like you, okay, can you pick up a bat? Can you go shag balls as they come back off the roof? and? shine them up and put them back in. In those days, you waited for the ball to go in the stands to come back on, not like today where they throw the balls up there. How many baseballs do they, do they use in the ball game? Anywhere from three to four to five dozen yep. in a ball game. In the old days, there was a kid of the name of Eddie Taylor, who was the assistant manager. He'd always count the balls in the ball bag and probably have 30 of them. And if there are any on the roof, he'd say, Rocky, 
I'm missing 10 balls, they're probably up on the roof, or the carnies would probably have them across the street where they'd hung on to them. And sometimes a guy wanted to go to a ball game, hey, you got any ball? Yeah, 50 cents, here's a ball. Okay. <laughs> That's the way we operated. We kept ourselves going, and but the background, once again, you waited for some guy to move out, then you become a bat boy, then you become an assistant clubhouse boy, and you became the official clubhouse boy, which gets us to another story in the hockey season, or the old Portland Buckaroos, which we eventually will probably get to that in there. Well, no, right. but that's another story. Uh, you get the story if you walk time. outside in the parking lot, there's exhibits of uh, old Slap Town photos and there's a number of um, buckaroos and rosebuds in the earlier oh, days. Yeah. At that's the, the one I was thinking. Of. That's, that's the one on 21st or whatever. 21st and Marshall. Marshall. Yeah. yeah. Actually, oh, Bill Sweeney's team. Yeah. 1936 Beavers. Jeez. Champions. Johnny Federicks. Yeah. Anybody remember Johnny Federicks? Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie Taylor. Yeah. Is it here? You remember Johnny Federicks, John? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what? Uh, I, in 1936, we were going to the ball games. I yeah. remember. He uh, holds a record. What's in, that? He holds a record in the major leagues. Johnny does. For six what? times pinch hitting. Six times pinch hitting. Six home runs. Oh, wow. Every time he, pin every time he pinched hit, home run, home wow. run, home run. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the beauty of watching guys in those days. I'm one of these guys that like to look at legs. And today they're wearing pajama bottoms in the big league. Oh, the pajama I, bottom is right. I hate it, Vince. Tommy Treblehorn, who's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame That's here with another week and a half. We, Dickie Benavento was nice enough to pick up Dick Sinovic and myself and take us down to Salem Kaiser to watch the uh, A-ball down there. And the Tommy volcanoes. Treblehorn, who used to manage the Milwaukee Brewers, uh, the Chicago Cubs, yeah. then once again, when you don't win, you are cut off at the pants. But he's found the job working for the San Francisco Giants. And he's had good luck with young kids that have gone up to the big leagues and he will be inducted into the Hall of Fame in another week and a half. So getting back to this photo, there too. look yeah, at the right good looking right legs the that you see of these ball players. <laughs> Today you don't know whether the guy's got a shank of a leg or he's got some muscle because everybody in the big leagues is wearing those pajama bottoms. I'm a right, leg man. man myself and I like to look at legs and this is a pretty good picture of what the guys look like. Those are legs that have some ability to hit a ball and to run. And here up in the upper left, I want to mention this guy right here, Bill Posdell. Oh, I'll tell you, when Johnny and I were clubhouse boy and bat boy, we'd always get out and shag in the outfield or Johnny would be working in the infield. And we'd kind of put on a couple of things that looked like a uniform. But Podell was a guy who was in the Navy. And one of these kinds of guys that if you ever did something, he'd knock you right on your butt. We learned from him, pay attention. Because if you don't pay attention, he didn't kick you in the back. He'd knock you on your fanny and then pick you up and say, kid, don't you ever do that again. But my brother and I got knocked down a few times and we remember Bill Posdell as one of the guys who would say, listen and learn. And if you use that term today, they're probably going to get rid of you as a teacher because you have to have respect for the young kids. Oh. <laughs> hey, Orlando. But that's a good picture right there. Yep. Now here's the last uh, last club that played oh, in Vaughn Street, 1955. Yeah. Thank you, Austin. And there's a, a couple of black people there that really, to if they could have been yeah. playing in those days, they would have made Portland famous. You had Louis Marquez, oh, a center fielder who could run like hell. Mm -hmm. 
today he'd be a big leaguer leading off. And then you had uh, Artie Wilson. Yeah. Artie Wilson played for Portland, Seattle, Oakland. And when he played for Portland, I asked him one day, I says, why did you choose Portland to live here after being with an All-American, uh, the Birmingham Barons in the Negro League? And he says, Vincey, yeah. my wife and I, we had two kids, and we thought Portland had the best school system wherever we had been playing ball, and we thought we would establish our residence right here in Portland. Now, Artie Wilson, if you could have seen him in those days, too bad that the picture wasn't down. When I talk about legs, <laughs> he had legs that looked like this. And I said, Artie, how come you wear the pants down? He says, I'm ashamed to say it, but I have no muscles. <laughs> so the bottom line, a wonderful human being. You couldn't have found a nicer guy to be on the ball club. Respectful, admired. He was of that Billy Bell and Phil Walden I were talking about a little while ago. Those are the people that I think were a credit to establishing residence here. They made you feel, I don't care whether you're black, pink, yellow, or green, you're a human being, let's learn to get along, and that was it. For sure. Artie, God bless you, yeah. you were a good one. Hey. Hey. Carney, yeah. Carney, been there, there and done go. that. Yeah. <laughs> Carney, this is uh, if you can see the sign in the car, it says two ball game. Yeah, the old 23rd, God love it. And the track used to go right to the stadium, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it would go right on 24 yeah, right and Thurman. Up Thurman, yeah. Yeah. Thurman yeah. Yeah. The, the cell would bus, yeah. trolley bus would go right to the ballpark. Oh, yeah, yeah the trolley would. The trolley yeah. bus. And they had the open air yeah. trolley like down in San Francisco here during the good weather. And that place, these streetcars were just loaded with people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and our mayor right now is doing the same thing, but all these streetcars, they don't wait for you, they go by you. <laughs> these people, conductors like the Carnies, they knew you were gonna be at that corner at a certain time, they'd slow their car down to wait to pick you up and Dick, I think you ought to mention it, but you and your brother uh, and your fathers, how you would take care of the public. Well, thank you. I, I told you the story earlier. Yeah. I heard that yeah. the historian that the trolley was built by developers who built houses up in the hills. Yeah. And they wanted to get people up there to buy them. So, um, and then. They were saying in 1905 they had this unbelievable weather, and people said, "Oh, what a wonderful place!" And so I'm thinking, every hundred years ish, <laughs> we have this great weather that we well, think is like. His <laughs> uncle probably related the story to, to what the Carney family did. Mr. Carney was one of those kinds of fellows that were talking like a father Mitchell. You're here to learn, pay attention. <laughs> We never paid a dime to get on the streetcars in those days. <laughs> that was a story that, I'm sorry to say it, but we got on for free. One guy, we'd gather our pennies and have a guy get a dime, and he would get on the streetcar, and we'd meet him at certain places as the streetcar would come up. We wouldn't go through the front door, he'd open up the back door. By the time we got to the place where we were to play a ball game, football, or uh, baseball, Conductor, there's 15 guys. <laughs> Look to see how much money you had. Ten cents in the whopper. In the old days, the streetcars had what was the cow uh, thing on the back end? Where and you call it a cow catcher. Cow catcher. Yeah, yeah. They didn't cow catch. They they had all of us guys from slab down. We knew that if we had to get home, get on the back of the streetcar, and the, the admission was free. But yeah. watch yourself. Yeah. Thank you. So your actually your comment uh, reminded me that uh, the stadium, Bond Street Park, uh, the original builder or developer was a streetcar magnate from Portland who was 
trying to drum up some business by having everyone around town use his uh, trolley lines to get to the games. Yeah. A guy also, named Tim, Swigert. Wasn't the construction of the 23rd Street line and the Willamette Heights line by two, yeah, yeah. Yeah. By two competing yeah. companies? This has really been a privilege. The, yeah. Appreciate everything. Uh, exposition. Yeah. yeah. And they were competing to get traffic to the World's Fair. And what you said was Alignment Heights came up Raleigh Street, down 27th, and up Thurman, and went up, up the end of the line on Thurman. And they extended the line because originally the the um, Alignment Heights streetcar was going to end on at uh, Thurman Street and 27th. That was the end of the line. But they pressured them to take it on up the hill. Yeah, to build that bridge so they go up there. But the two lines were both built in the 1902 to 1904 in advance of the World's Fair. So the 23rd end made up to Upshur, turn one block, or up Thurman, turn one block on 27th, went back down the hill. That was the main entrance of the World's Fair, yeah, so right. right to the World's Fair. No, right. I, Dick, if I write, Besides the Willamette Heights streetcar, we had what was it, the North and South line? Yes. North and, it North ran, and it South. Ran from, yes. Right. It ran from Upland Wards and it came down and went across 16th Street and went clear out to Fulton, clear out to Southwest Portland. Right. And through what it used to be the Jewish end of town and the Italians and Jewish oh. end of town and in Southwest Portland. So it ran clear from Northwest Portland to clear to yeah. what's called Fulton. And that was that was probably one of the reasons then the extension of the Selwood line that came oh, sure, yeah. came across and they ended up at the ballpark. Right. Because that was the yeah, river uh, wheel uh, trolley. Yeah, they had the trolley up on top. Yeah. Right. So this is, this is Street in 1910. Wow. Well actually they got oh. across the street. No. If you look at this, you got street cars right there. Oh so this is the opening day of the uh, of the World's Fair. Oh the World's Fair. That's because that's the corner of the on Upshur. On Upshur? Yeah, that's where the, the yeah. entrance was. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. A, this was labeled as being, it's an OHS photo, but it was labeled as being Bond Street. No, there was no, never streetcars going by Bond Street. Okay. They always went up 23rd. Yeah. Okay. And you notice everybody's wearing hats. Women are wearing uh, the nice I know they're all, they're all dressed up. up. They all got suits on in those yeah. days. Yeah, that well, that's good to know, because I had that. That was an era. Yeah. It really was. Now this is Von Street, oh. yes. showing the crowd. That's the right, right field bleachers. Right. That's right. I love that photo. Was it, Dickie, was it the right field bleachers, I, as a kid I remember, you could drink beer in the right field bleachers, oh. but you couldn't drink it in the grandstand. Was that right? Well, so I can't, I can't I remember testify the that. The right field bleachers would be packed okay, the, when the grandstand would be about uh, half full. Yeah. Well, we had a big beer stand right on the, in the main I, lobby. I think you, you could drink. We had that main beer stand right there with the, yeah, the turnstiles. But I remember yeah, going, I hear you go to the right field. Oh, you, really? You were closer to the beer, I guess, or something. Yeah. Maybe closer to a beer stand. <laughs> and, it was, and it was all general admission there. Right, yeah. Yeah, if you general. notice those bleachers there, those are the wooden ones. Yeah. Yeah. Then they had a fire, then they ended up rebuilding them. Yeah. They had a fire in right field. Did they rebuild them metal uh, with metal? Yeah. No, the it's yeah. wooden again. Wood, but yeah, yeah. more modern, yeah. Ones, yeah. not the big thick ones. The thing I liked about that. Another shot of the thing. crowd. Why? Look at the kids on the top railing. Yeah, that's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sit on the top of the railing. We all grew up. You know, all the parents were making vino and rum and selling it to the yeah. Here's there Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Papa. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that vehicle. Oh, this year, it was, well, the Signal Oil was sponsored it for us, but the other than that, I, I, I thought you enjoyed. told me about it. Was, didn't he have that for a while? Or maybe it took the place of his truck or something? Well, they used to drag it with the Model T Ford that John yeah, yeah. Bestick used to drive around. Didn't, he, John? didn't he drive that up from California? Your yeah. Name? He did, drove it up from, from San Jose. Yeah, yeah. And then he dragged, you know, the field. And then they came in and got this there. And, that was fun to drive around <laughs> out in the outfield. He didn't like me doing it. <laughs> was fun. That's a nice picture. Yeah. Here he is. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mowing the grass. That's we all did that. He, Remember that, John? Yeah. Yeah, did he? didn't have riding mowers in those days. No. <laughs> had to pull that thing all the way around the outfield. Yeah. 
We take turns. Yeah. That how how wide is that? Doesn't seem too wide. It's, it's about a yard long. wide, three feet or. Three That's a half. lot of mowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took a long time. Yeah. I was always younger, and I wanted go to play ball. Both ways, or some, just one one. Well, slot. you you know, saw you back and forth, back yeah, yeah, and forth. Yeah. So there'd be a nice pattern. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Like for summer. Yeah. Yep. Amados. Coca-Cola. Amados up in the Yeah. Santos. What they do before gas engine mowers? Because I'm sure that Rocky was cutting the grass before there was. I don't think so. I think we always had the gas. I don't remember the old Vince. He could tell you. Did, did what did we have, Vince? Did we have gas? No. No. I think we had the old style lawnmowers. The old, like you do doing your own lawn. I'm pushing. I remember the gas. I remember. Yeah, the rotary the gas was in by the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't remember that. I don't know wow. when gas mowers came in. It must have been in the <laughs> late 30s, or early 40s. So, <laughs> tell me who's in this photo besides okay. Rocky. Well, yeah, they would have because the Adolf Rudolph deal came in and what? Tom Bessick. Help me, John. What? Who oh. are these people? You got eight well, up? There's Ruth Satlich there. Yeah. I don't know who that guy is on the end. It looks like he's got a beard. I don't know, but next to him is Satlich. <laughs> Lucky. The next. Isn't next that your is dad? That is that your brother Tom? Tom. And, and who's then, behind Tommy? And I can't, I can't okay. recognize the other. Isn't that your dad on the right? Yeah, that's my dad on the yeah. right. That's oh, is that your dad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like a beard. It looks like a beard. It must be the shade or something. Yeah. yeah. Who's the guy right in the middle? That that's the other Satlich twin, right. I think, uh, there. The, the two Satlich Yeah, one that's on the each other Satlich twin. I wonder who's behind them in the corner. And I don't know who these two, guys, three guys are on the end. It's got to be Stanley Bozic. Bozic's in the dark. Yeah. Where's Stanley? I think that is Stanley, third, yeah. Third from the left. Yeah. Look at the cuffs they've rolled up on their pants. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> they did that. Yeah. And you rolled them up higher. I think that's Stanley right next to Rudy or Adolf? No, next to uh, Adolf there is Stanley. That's Tommy. Then, that's your brother. No, that's no over to the le to the other side, left side. Yeah. Left side. In the yeah. dark dark sweater. Dark sweater, light oh, pants. Oh. That's too bigger. That's too big for Stanley. <laughs> it might be. I don't. Quite he looks a little bit too big. I mean, kind of muscular. So this is nine. Yeah, this had to be about 1930. Seven or so. Yeah, see, Stan would only been uh, seven years old. Yeah, he wouldn't been that big. I don't know who those guys. He knows it's all as Rudolph. Which one's your brother, John? Well, right you know, I think this is uh, the other Savage twin. That's yeah. Savage twin. I don't know who that is. I don't either. And I don't know who that is. Either That's do family. I. And I don't know who the one behind who Tommy. Is either no, I don't know who that is. Tommy's in the, in the front. Oh, the smaller guy? Yeah. Yeah, that's bigger than Tommy. Yeah, that's Tommy. See, where you go? Where were you, John? I don't know. I'm taking the picture. Well, the picture yeah, taking coming, the picture. Right. There's a picture coming up with me that I don't remember either with Tommy Bridges. Oh, there's Bridges. Now there's Stanley. There's Stan. Stan. And Butler, right? The Butler was the one in the middle. And Bill Mulligan. Is that Bud Ozzy? Pesky? Bill Mulligan. It's not Bud Ozzy? No. Phil no. Mulligan, Dickie. It doesn't look like Mulligan. Yeah. We'll have to find out. <laughs> Mulligan because one time he's getting his hat on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a great one. Charlie Severa, Mo, the second mole. I don't know the second one. Charlie Severa, then the big one I don't remember. Benton Mole, the third one. That's a pretty good picture. So the the players must have all loved your dad. Didn't Look they? at the bucket. Oh. Yeah, it was fun. The guy's beating him. I don't know who the last. <laughs> Bill Ballinger. Did I see Ballinger? Recreation. That's who that is. Ballinger. Ballinger to the way to the right. He's Charlie Silver. First one this way. Who was who was behind Yogi Bear for about ten years? Charlie Silver. Oh, and he never got to play, but he was in a bullpen. <laughs> but got all the rings. All the oh, Yogi rings. He's still alive. Oh. And he lives in San World Francisco, Series right? John Silvera lives down in <laughs> the Bay Area. Uh, speaking of uh, the guys, the bucket that the guy's beating. Is that a water bucket? That's the bucket? water bucket. I still have a, 
Yeah, Water you brought bucket. that, didn't you? And uh, Put I the should fires donate out. that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And the bottom line, many a day we would go with Rocky, and Rocky had barrels where he had water in the, uh, not so much the bleachers, the bleachers they could have burned up and gone to hell as far as he was concerned, but the, the, uh, the Bond Street and back of home plate, that was extra special. And the bucket that you see, many a fire was put out by Rocky and the kids that helped Rocky Benevento. And it's a pretty good picture. That would be a good photo today to show what the camaraderie of living in America and the bucket brigade, the carrying of, I don't know what that flag is. Probably looks a like fourth, a sweatshirt. It's the 4th of July. Yeah. Well, look at this. I think it's a sweatshirt. Oh, yeah, I think it you're is. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 quite a photo. That's pretty fun. Yeah. I think we oh, know these guys, too. Dickie. Oh, Dickie. <laughs> I don't remember that one. <laughs> Cute little guy, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando. Look at the space between home plate and the yeah. grandstand. Yeah. <laughs> Not even 20 hours. Now, there's a good idea of what we were talking about a while ago. Rocky's back at Yankee Stadium looking down. There are eight guys around home plate. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's got Rocky, Rocky and a, and a half, a, half a ball player working, Dickie Benevento. <laughs> That's it's a good picture. Yeah. Orlando. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, this is 25th anniversary. Yeah. My sister and myself, Rolly Truitt, yeah, and that jacket I had on earlier. There it is. <laughs> is it there someplace? It's got to be there somewhere. But that was, a fun, that was a fun anniversary. It went overnight at the Mount Loma Hotel and oh, well. room service. And, wow. and those are all gifts from yeah. the Rocky Head. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was okay, fun. The well, what he's holding is a marble Rocky for Faithful Service. I have that. Now oh, now it's now. a. I see. It's a big marble. Yeah, yeah. Um, like a tombstone. <laughs> Is it from the club? From, from the baseball the, yeah, club? Well, yeah, they pre well, it's presented from the baseball fans. Yeah. Oh, the from the fans? Yeah. yeah. I like this shot because it just shows, again, why Rocky was Where is it? in the back. Isn't that him? Back on the right. To the right? Is that him? Yeah, that, yeah I think that could be him. Yeah. You recognize the faces in there? Yeah. Is that? I don't know. He looks too big. He was dad was more. Is that too big? Yeah. Isn't that Pat Tabor? No. Doesn't look like him. Yeah, There's Pat Larry Tabor. Klein. Yeah. It does look like him, and there yeah. is Larry Klein. Looks like Larry Klein. And down there is that. But these two. Johnny, is that 1940 your Pesky. That's, Might be. I don't know. They're too See old. Himself? Might be. Yeah. I don't recognize that picture at all for any yeah, yeah, for Is that you on the left, all, almost all the way down the table? With my Where like, was that taken? Yeah. Gee, I don't know. Yeah. What does it say? Probably taking the Rockies home. Yeah. There's yeah. a lampshade in the back. There's a lamp. Is that a baseball lamp? That's the restaurant, that's for sure. <laughs> is that the restaurant wasn't that big? I think big? this photo came from Friendly House, and they said it was yeah. at Friendly House. Well, is that, yeah, is that possible? Yeah. 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 On the top I don't think so. Your, does that look like your house? No. no. It's a friendly house. It says up in the upper yeah. left. Yeah. Huh. Isn't that funny? How do you recognize anybody? <laughs> it doesn't look like Larry Klein. That's Klein. Yeah, I know. Look at that. But I don't know who the others are. I really don't Pat either, Tabor. John. Pat Tabor. You think that's your dad like on the upper Klein. right? I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Upper right. Right here. Yeah, that's what it says in the cap. Yeah, it looks like he's too big into his face. Yeah. That's funny. Well, maybe it's mislabeled. Right on the boys. Like Bob Carter. Dinner at Friendly House. Well, they had a hall. They used to have a dinner at Friendly House all the time. Yeah. Oh, Bob. Yeah, Raleigh and Bob. There you go. Raleigh and Bob. Yeah. Bob Blackbird. <laughs> Blackbird just passed away about a year ago. Did he pass away? He did? Yeah. 
Uh, there's Rowley again? Yeah, I like that shot. Oh, that's a good shot. That's, I saw that's him. it. Number in action. Yeah. For some event. He had a great uh, voice yeah. delivery. Yeah. You guys were telling me I'd never heard that story about away games where he'd recreate. Oh, that was some, yeah. that, that was broadcast. special, special. <laughs> the recreation. Yeah. Recreate that was hits. special, wasn't it? They recreate hits and crowd noise. I list the tank for a whole year for it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Just out of the ticker tape, but though they had the ticker tape. Classic statement from Blackburn to Raleigh. Hey, Raleigh, it's a sixth inning. Raleigh, they're still coming in. Raleigh, they're still coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nixon we said very excited this morning. Somehow. We did. And well, I saw that in the newspaper, the examiner. Well, it was in the Oregonian. And yeah. There's a good picture of that. Looking at the old, look at the lights from the old days. Oh, the lights, yeah. The lights, yeah. The lights are up now. Profile back. So that's in the 50s. In the 50s, late 40s, early 50s. Is there a woman in that picture? There are uh, uh, young girl acrobats who are doing oh. some kind of routine. I see. There's a good weather. Well, there's Tommy one with Raleigh and Tommy Bridges and myself, and I don't remember that. <laughs> but I think it's me. Probably after yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see that thing. Oh, yeah. Mr. Ryerson, oh. Michael, Hi. hello. How are you guys? How are you, Mike? Good. Did you have a good show? Yes, we did. Good. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know Dick Sinovic? I know all you guys. <laughs> We're still kicking. Still yeah, so alive. am I. Yeah. What's the next one? Kim, you're holding that one a long time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Any reason? Whoa. Here's the color shot. Another Whoa. color shot. Yeah. I had to tear everything down over there for that theater group. You want to do your? Uh, oh. You want to do your history thing here? We could. Uh, and I, I'm thinking because I otherwise I got to set. I have it. it on my computer actually. Well, so I'm thinking there. if you want to do it here, I could. We could announce it on stage over there. It'll be here. Because I only had three. Norm had about ten. Yeah, I, I wonder how many people yeah, are going to be here at four o'clock. And that theater group's in there now. I had to tear everything down. Yeah. And we have to set it all back up again. Yeah, no, You're set up. Yeah, I'm all set up. So why don't we announce that yep. at four? Yep. Okay. Good, Good. Mike. Good. Yeah. So everyone knows Mike's uncle. Was Wade. Mike Ryerson. Mike Wade Ryerson's Williams. uncle, Wade Williams. Oh. It was. Mean guy, we'll, we'll tell a story about, <laughs> well, hmm? Wade Williams. We just introduced... Too bad it's not on film, but Mike Ryerson graduated from Jefferson High School. And that guy there was there when I was there. Yeah. Teaching. I, I don't remember you as a student, but uh, I remember you. You were just a young 30-year-old some guy. <laughs> but the bottom line, his uncle was Wade Williams. Wade W. Williams. Yeah. He always wore a nice tie and a good suit when he was in class. Not like the kids today that are teachers. <laughs> Wear what you want as long as you come dressed. But the bottom line, Wade Williams used to say to us, you kids are here to get an education. You come to class, you listen, you pay attention. And if you don't pay attention, I'm going to send you home, and then your parents will deal with you. Because they don't understand the American language, so when you come back home, you've done something wrong. So we learned from Wade Williams Pay attention, be a good student, and learn to follow orders. And we eventually graduated. A lot of us went on to college. And we want to thank Wade Williams on behalf of your uncle for doing what he did. To and don't forget, to keep your thumb out of your mitt. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And Wade, you didn't mention, did you, that Wade Williams was a great baseball coach for Jefferson? Oh, wonderful but baseball Lincoln. coach. Yeah. Lincoln, I think. Yeah, for Lincoln. Oh, for Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we're just admiring this right, ball right. field of Who Rocky was the coach Bill at Jefferson? Yeah. No doubt. Link the beer uh, just came nope. back home. But that the outfield was flooded that. like it was John some other said, long time. And the bottom line, uh, look at how nice and green. But remember, 
he, it was the kids know, the that mowed the grass that helped put uh, that thing into shape. And to me, it's a beautiful picture. It's a great picture. Yeah. And the background, probably a cloudy sky, probably had a fire someplace. <laughs> field burning. Yeah, field burning. Who field was the longtime right. Jefferson baseball coach? Look, oh, oh, starts the guy, with L. Uh, uh, well, Wade Williams, uh, every time I try to think of his name, Lindsey Campbell. Yes, Lindsey Campbell. Yeah. Lindsey Campbell and, and Wade Williams were probably two of the best heads for baseball at our time of growing up. They were like big league managers. What's the out? What's the situation? What do I do if I get the ball? You learn to think ahead. And today, you got guys in the big league that can't think ahead because here they have a pitch three and two the ball is thrown right down the middle and they look at it they think it's ball four it's strike three you're out of here <laughs> wade williams and lindsey campbell says you're up there attack the ball make sure you get good wood in and run like hell the first base beat the throw well sometimes <laughs> we thought our pants were on fire because the coach would give us hell when we come back they can never coach today though vince yeah. yeah you know that day i got on base and something happened vince those two i don't know about lindsay but wade could never get a job just a coaching today because his vocabulary included many bad <laughs> words yeah. he was cussing the kids out <laughs> With um, just very yeah, emphasis, that, yeah. Where was she in the English language, that <laughs> emphasis? But Wade Williams. Jimmy be glad. We're I moving made a on, Ben. On the ball ben. Field. <laughs> <laughs> I come in, and Look at that man. Wade says, what did you do? He says, I made a mistake. I thought. He says, yeah. who the hell ever told you to think? And he grabbed you by the damn shirt and looked you up off the ground. You're supposed to react. You don't think. And that's the idea that we learned what's up, uh, what's the situation, what do I do if I get the ball? And that, that's the ball game all over. There you are, right there. Who's that guy? Jim, uh, Jim Glad. Yeah. Glad. Jim Glad. Jim Catcher. One of the biggest catchers in baseball. Jimmy he was? Glad. He was tall, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, he was. He looks big. And look at that ball. Couldn't ball. hit worth a damn. Dick, were you a... Uh, Bat boy or clubhouse boy? Oh, yeah. what? Oh, Dick. Were you a bat boy or clubhouse boy? No. You never were? I was a player. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? But I mean, before that. <laughs> before that? No. No. You just hung no. around the ball. Just hung around. I ran the scoreboard and I was Is that right? scared as hell. <laughs> that day you had to climb up a wooden stepladder mm -hmm. to get to the top mm -hmm. things where you put mm -hmm. the metal scores yeah. of all the other Coast League teams. And he used to hate to go up and post, <laughs> put that. Oh, it was scary. The you know, the no bleachers ones, anyhow. Yeah. You remember when the wind blew and you're up there? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh. wow, scared. Clear. Clear. Clovins and I had that for two or three years. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody had faith in God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we come back down to earth. Was that a one-person job, only one no, person? No, it was two. Oh. Yeah. There was a kid by the name of Dave Noah. God bless his soul. He ran that scoreboard better than the umpire and back to home plate. <laughs> the umpires look up the scoreboard to get the uh, <laughs> ball and strike. He could also have been a good professional football kicker. He could kick a football 60 yards with no screen at all. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Who's that? Looks like Eddie Basinski. He does. It does. Yeah. That's that third, third base. Third Harvey so. Story. Yeah, Where is that? There's, there's George Hill, no yeah. No. No. Harvey Story, baby? He decided to have a third base. Yeah, yeah. No, third base. Yeah. Outside. Harvey Story? You Harvey think? Story. It's kind of hard. made a million dollars a year if he was living during the time of the. Uh, what's that? The guy that, pin, the guy that hits all the time does nothing else. Oh, yeah. Designated hitter? Designated yeah, hitter, yeah. yeah. Well, the right. DH. Yeah. The DH. He could do that. He could hit. Yeah, There's Eddie. Eddie. There's Chris Eddie. Field That's the Eddie Basinski there. Yeah. Yeah. The, the fiddler. The, the fiddler. The spider. The spider, yeah. Part of violin Food. The Eddie Basinski. Yeah. Basinski. Yeah. Basinski. Good, good infield. Yeah, he was. There he is. Good field. Yeah. Very good fielder. 
about lifetime, 270, 275. You eat that much? Maybe. Yeah, he would be at least over 250. What was the uh, what was a great double play combination that Zach Basinski the mole? Zach the Basinski the mole. <laughs> Who? Zach. There you are again. <laughs> Zach the Basinski the mole. No, I'm they not. Wrote a song about that. That's not you. No, mole. Zach the Basinski the mole. Wasn't that Fenn? Fenn mole. Fenn mole. Everybody Wait. says that's me in there. And I get so much credit and they even put it up in PGE Park and Dickie Benavento, and that is not me. No. no. And they, they said it was. Oh, they see it here. Dick Benavento. Oh, they had yeah. dark hair. You look like you. Doesn't like you. It looked like you. Dick. No, John. <laughs> John, I'm much cuter is. than that. <laughs> you were an older guy. Johnny, Beth. That's yeah, not no, me. that's not you. Yeah, who is? But I don't know who. In fact, a couple of years ago with Vince, a guy came up to me and told me who he was. <laughs> when he was, he was in his 60s, came up to me and said, I was in that picture, and my name is in <laughs> on that picture at Peachy well, Park. He had black hair, so he, he thought it was Dickie. But it looked like Liska, Hal Saltzman, Eddie Basinski, and uh, the third baseman. Leo was, Thomas. Yeah. Leo Thomas. And was Rocky yeah, he, was a good he was a good hitter. Good, good ball player. Dickie yeah, Dickie would have been old. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Hey, he was Portuguese. Leo Thomas. He was? Yeah. He was what? Portuguese. Portuguese. I think. Oh, boy. There's the old there stadium coming down. No. Uh, no, that's after a fire. Yeah, that's in right, uh, right field, yeah. So is that the scoreboard you're talking about? Yeah. 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 And now with a dangerous <laughs> scoreboard. Right, Dick? I'd never go up there. I think I was up there seriously, only maybe maybe once. What? Up this, all the way up the scoreboard. Wow. One time only. You went up there once? Not on the ladder, just up to the, the oh, where you turn the crank. Yeah. Here's where the stadium's oh going down. Oh my gosh. That would have been a good fire drill today. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't have lasted very long. Well, that's a good picture. Sad picture. Yeah. Mm. What we call the golden days of Bond Street. Bond Street West. What would you like to have a piece of wood from that days as a collector's item? Yeah. I got three of the grandstand seats in my front front door. Yeah, and I got a couple of I got eyes. three grandstand seats. One, two, three. Hey, Rocky. <laughs> what was that? Rocky West Jams business man looked to be a bank of him in 1956. It used to be, that's a good immaculate room. He probably said, looks, yeah. like, uh, looks like they used the military volunteers on that. Right. Because of yeah. Whatever they were doing, did they take yeah. the sands down? Yeah. That's from the, from the engineers yeah. over in Swan Island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, that's a Sports great picture. <laughs> Who did that? Yeah, I think it's out of yeah. the journal. Oh, that's probably out of the journal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in memory. In 55, that's when the, they all moved down to yeah. the PGE. Stadium. Yeah, Monoma Stadium. Yeah. Fade to Black September. The last of Bond Street and the bleachers. Let's <laughs> see. That's a good picture to show that you. That's it, gentlemen. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was very. That was